The National Museum of African American History and Culture is the 11th Smithsonian Museum to be located on the National Mall, and it was built on the last available space on the mall at 14th Street and Constitution Avenue in Washington, D.C. The museum itself was established by Act of Congress in 2003, after decades of effort to promote the contributions of African Americans to the United States. In 2009, the design team was chosen by a 10-person design competition jury who works for the Smithsonian Institution. This design team comprised of AdJ Associates, Freelon Group, Davis Brody Bond, and Smith Group JJR. AdJ Associates functioned as the lead designer while Freelon Group covered the interior design scope above grade. Davis Brody Bond covered the interior design scope below grade, and Smith Group JJR was responsible for the enclosure of the building from foundation to the roof. Clark Construction Group was awarded a contract for the museum along with Smoot Construction and H.J. Russell & Company, which are two of the largest minority-owned construction firms in the country. Various other consultants and contractors worked on the National Museum of African American History and Culture, including Robert Stillman Associates for Structural Engineering and Enclos and North Star for the distinctive facade of the museum. As I mentioned, both the design teams and the construction teams were large for a single project of this scale. By having four designers, the Smithsonian Design Jury was able to pick and choose parts of the designs for the museum. While this is favorable for the owner the Smithsonian Institution, I can only imagine the bouts of contention between designers and construction firms along with consultants and subcontractors. The National Museum of African American History was a traditional design bid build project meaning that the owner would have had to vary RFIs from the contractors to the responsible designers and the responses would have had to trickle back to the contractors. Like the diagram shown, this interchange could have gotten messy quite fast. The communication and teamwork on this project must have been tremendous in order to proceed on schedule. In 2009, the design team was picked for the National Museum of African American History and Culture. Then in 2012, the contract was awarded to the contracting team. The original schedule was for the construction to begin in 2012 and end in November of 2015. Because of delays in administering construction management at-risk contracts, along with other inefficiencies, construction did not begin until spring of 2013, 51 days beyond the expected date. Additional delays were caused by the overlap of construction and exhibit work because of the conflicting work sequences. With the delays, completion of the museum occurred September of 2016, almost a full year later than expected. This is far from the ideal situation for all parties involved, and it is a great example as to why having a good schedule and sticking to it is important. The museum was contracted out for $500 million, and it ended up costing $540 million. The main distribution of funds is shown in the table. The funding for the project was split evenly between federal appropriations and private donations, including donations from companies such as Nike, 3M, American Express, GE, and Target. The main aspects of the scope for the National Museum of African American History and Culture included the excavation of the site, below grade construction, above grade construction, and the exterior facade known as the Corona. The excavation included more than 350,000 cubic yards of mixed soil to make space for a 70 foot deep four level history gallery, theater, and mechanical room. The concrete foundation walls were over six feet thick to account for hydrostatic pressure. 60% of the structure is below grade, while the remaining 40% rises 85 feet above grade. Perhaps the most distinctive feature of the project is the corona that surrounds the building. The corona is 103 feet tall and is a three-tiered facade of glass and cast aluminum to look like the bronze ironwork crafted by African Americans common in Louisiana, South Carolina. As the corona rises, the pattern becomes denser to account for solar orientation, allowing certain amounts of sunlight through. The corona aids in the building's sustainability effort as additional lighting is minimal and the shade eliminates the need for excessive air conditioning in the museum. The museum is the most sustainable Smithsonian Museum with a LEED Gold certification. Some of the challenges of this project included the difficult excavation and dewatering of the excavation without affecting nearby structures like the Washington Monument. Also, some of the exhibits were too large to put in the museum after construction, so the artifacts were placed in the structure mid-construction and had to be carefully protected throughout the process. As the video shows, multiple tower cranes were used on the project and were used for tandem picks to place a historic 88-foot-long Pullman rail car and a 21-foot prison guard tower in the below-grade section of the museum. Overall, the National Museum of African American History and Culture was a successful construction project despite the setbacks in schedule, the challenges with the excavation and dewatering, 
and the complicated sequence of construction and making exhibits at the same time. Furthermore, the museum showcases the hardships and contributions of African Americans throughout history, making the museum especially important for the generations to come.